Hey guys, welcome in Stinky Truth Podcast. Mark Schlerth alongside Mike Evans. Thank you so much for uh, downloading, for watching, for subscribing, and doing all those things. Mike, how are you, buddy? It's here. I NFL know it. season I know starts. It. I know it. Uninterrupted until yes. February. Let the good times roll. You mm-hmm. know, it seems like every week here on this podcast, we talk about the Jets, right? But sure. today, it doesn't involve Aaron Rodgers. Mm-hmm. Cornerback DJ Reed believes that this Jets defense can be historic, comparing it to the 85 Bears or the Legion of Boom Seahawks. They were number four in defensive scoring and total yards yes. last year, so maybe... Um, well, you know, I, I mean, before, you know, before we go on and, and put ourselves up with the 85 Bears or the Seahawks of 2013 or the Broncos of 2015 or, you know, the Ravens of 2000 or the, uh, what was it, the uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers of 2001, what, whatever it was, um, let's go out and let's go out and prove it, right? And, and there's part of that that you look at as good as they were last year. With the offense, the way it operated, you know, the complementary nature of football. And I know that's kind of cliche to talk about, but when you can produce, when your offense can stay on the field, when you can keep your defense fresh, like the the impact, the overall impact you can have on a defense just by the way you play offensive football is tremendous. And, you know, it's, it's interesting. Herm Edwards is a good friend of mine, and, and Herm and I did TV for, get, for a long time, Um over at ESPN, and Herm used to say when he was, a, you know, a D-backs coach at Tampa or a coordinator, he would always talk about, listen, when you get to about 63 plays on defense, that's about the time when you start breaking apart on the defensive side of the ball. And he said, you look at the statistics of yards gained after 63 plays, and it grows exponentially. And defense is interesting because defense takes a hell of a lot more effort than offense. You know, if, if I'm playing offense and we come off the ball and we break a 14, 15 yard run and I cut you or whatever, you know, I block you for 1,000, 1,000, two, the back breaks out. Um, you know, if I'm on the ground, I just lay there on my big fat stomach, just kind of watch, you know, like, hey, look at the back go. Isn't that awesome? You know what you have to do as a defender? You have to jump up and chase. Or if a fumble pops out, what about, you know, I don't, I don't do anything. I just get up, huddle, you know, I mean, I don't, I don't care. And so the effort that's required to play defense is exponentially more than is the effort required to play offense. And so when you start kind of expending that type of energy, man, you start getting into the 60, 63 plays that's why the college system doesn't work in, in pro football. You can't ask your defense to do that. You won't survive. And so really interesting, you know, to have those kind of numbers. Now all of a sudden, if we produce on the offensive side of the ball, we keep our defense fresh. The amount of success that that defense can have, and they've got some. I mean, they've got C.J. Mosley's a player. Williams is a player. Sauce Gardner's a player. Like, they've got... They've got legit players on that defense. And I have so much respect for Robert Sala as a football coach. I just think he's tremendous. So it'll be it'll be fun. That that's a team, that's a team that I think everybody feels like they're gonna be a playoff team, but I'm not so sure that they don't win that division. So whether it, you want to define it as bulletin board material or putting that bullseye on your back, right. you don't think that there's too much hype right now around the Jets that might lead them to a fall? Well, I, 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 listen, man, listen, that's not my, up to? my style is not that of, look how good I am. Right. Here I come, I'm going to kick right. your ass, You're right? You're laying the weeds guy. Right, I'm laying the weeds <laughs> guy and snipe you, you know? I mean, I'm like, okay, yeah, and I want you to feel like, you're going to have a great game. I want you to feel pretty good about yourself. You know, I I want you to be stuck in honey. Like, I want syrup. I want to pour syrup all over. Oh, man, the guy's great. The guy's a pro bowl. He's unbelievable. I want you so, I mean, I want you so weighted down by all the syrup I pour on you that you're stuck in, in your place, right? And then I can just go on to beating you up. Like, that's how, that's how I want to approach it. I don't want to give you a reason to hate me or a reason to continue to, to go out there and play well. I mean, this is almost a little bit of a of what the the nation witnessed in in CU's football game against TCU, right? 
we coming, we coming, we here, we're there. Like, on and on and on and on. And nobody, you know, nobody really, other than the guys on that roster, the guys on that coaching staff it, for Deion Sanders and Coach Prime, like, nobody really bought into it. I didn't. I thought, yeah, I listen, trenches, battle of trenches. I don't know that they can win. Like, on and on it goes. Man, that was one of the most remarkable games I've ever seen. And that's stepping out and basically putting the white hot spotlight on yourself and saying, here's the bullseye, come get a taste. And I love like it's not my if, if you can back it up. Yeah, it's not my style, but I love it. But if you don't back it up, you look foolish. Well, I, and you are, know the what? Jet, are the Jets putting themselves in that kind of a, a I, category? I think the Jets are in a place where they believe, and especially that Jets defense, because they know they did it without a remarkable offense last year. They know they did it without Aaron Rodgers last year. So now all of a sudden you get Aaron Rodgers, you sustain drives, and you you know, and you're getting the fourth quarter and you've only hit forty six plays. And you know, I mean, Mike, that's that's big for them. We're gonna get to some predictions from you for who you think will win the divisions. Okay. Wild card teams, all that, but I think you can maybe tipped your hand a little bit when it comes to the AFC East. But staying in the AFC East, Bill Belichick finally, after a full off season of not really even mentioning Mac Jones's name, came out and said, hey, Max had a really good offseason and really think he's ready to go. Do you feel Mac Jones will be the long-term answer quarterback for the Patriots? Yes. I really do. Didn't even get the question all the way out of my no. mouth. Yeah, yeah I, I really I really do. Like, obviously, he's not going to run around and scramble for first downs and do all that stuff, right? He's going to keep them out of harm's way. He's going to be able to understand the offense to a degree where he can get them out of any bad play. And he's got complete and total freedom at the line of scrimmage to do that. And I go back to his rookie season. And he played he played well enough for them to get into the playoffs his rookie season. And when I sat down with Josh McDaniels and I sat down with Bill Belichick, they both said the same thing. Insatiable appetite for information can take what you give him in the morning and executed flawlessly in the afternoon has total authority to operate from the line of scrimmage. And this is as a rookie because he was that smart. Now you saddled him with a special teams coach and a defensive coordinator as the co offensive coordinators. Like what you did to him last year, shame on you. Yeah. That's when your brilliance and your genius becomes just a little too much. You know, that's the crossover. Belichick's. Yeah. That's the crossover between from brilliance and from brilliance and, and genius to just flat out arrogance. You cannot, you can't do that to a young player. And so I think Bill Belichick, you know, not that I, I, he doesn't have to admit anything to me or anybody else publicly, like his resume speaks for itself, but I think it's a, public admission when you go out and get Bill O'Brien to come back to, into the fold to be your offensive coordinator that what I did last year was an abject disaster. I created a shit show and I'm going to rectify that. And so this is part of that process of rectification and basically coming back out and saying Mac Jones is what we thought he was as a rookie and we screwed this thing up last year. That's on us. And so, you know, I'll, I'll give Bill Belichick, um, I'll give him a lot of credit for, you know, making a colossal mistake and rectifying that colossal mistake because you can't, there's no other way you can assess that. What they did last year was, I mean, it just was abhorrent. And you talk about quarterback development, how important the quarterback position is. What they did to that kid was just like, it, it wasn't, it wasn't good, obviously. Chris Jones, according to a report uh, from Ian Rappaport, that uh, Chris Jones wants to be paid in the vicinity of Aaron Donald. Sure. Not necessarily more than Aaron Donald, but he wants to be paid in the vicinity. Okay. You love Aaron Donald. You think he's the best football player yeah. in the league. Mm -hmm. Should Chris Jones be paid basically in the same neighborhood as Aaron Donald? Yes. Chris Jones is that dominant of a player. Like, I, I would, listen, as I travel around the league and I do games, there are very few guys that are in the same neighborhood that you would speak of 
with the same kind of reverence that you do with Aaron Donald. And Chris Jones is one of those guys. Chris Jones is that dominant a player. And, you know, I I hate the fact that we always, we always relate dominance to the number of sacks you have, right? It, it's always... It, it always just relates that way because it's something tangible that the average football fan can grasp onto and go, oh, look how good he is. He had 15 and a half sacks last year. But I always kind of look at guys from a game planning standpoint, and I think to myself, when you break the huddle and a guy demands the kind of attention that Chris Jones demands, that, that Aaron Donald demands, where – you know, one coach said, you got to get four hands on him at all times, meaning we've got to double team him on every single play. And what that does to you as an offense, like there's nothing better as an offense to know at any point we can get five guys out in the, in the route combination, that we can go straight scat protection, meaning our five on your five and our quarterback has no help anywhere. He's not no back. There's nobody that's staying in. So we can get out. And we can run. It's almost like run and gun stuff, like basketball, right? Mm -hmm. Let our point guard just orchestrate. So let's run and gun this damn thing. When you got Aaron Donald or Chris Jones, you can't do that. So now all of a sudden it eliminates part of your playbook. It, 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 it eliminates your fast break playbook because you can't break the huddle and go, our guard can handle him. <laughs> no, he can't. <laughs> you know, he, he can't handle him. We just know that he can't. And so it, it just becomes one of those things, Mike, where you've got to account for that guy on every single play offensively. And what that does to you as an offense is it eliminates part of the stuff that you can do. Like you, you've got to take your playbook and say basically, okay, let's take out this 30% of our playbook because we can't operate with that dude on the other side of the line of scrimmage. I always look at it like, hey, man, when you're never afraid anywhere on the football field, Let's, let's say wide receivers. If you're not afraid of going one-on-one, -on -one, if you sit there and say, hey, listen, there's a reason Devontae Adams is Devontae Adams, right? Because you can't go, hey, our corner can lock up that guy and, and eliminate him for the game. No, you got to say, hey, man, on the weak side of the field and, you know, when he's playing X receiver and he's into the boundary, we got to play cover two on that side. So we're going to jam that corner. We're going to ride him and turn him over to the safety. We're going to make him like we're going to make him take an inside release so that safety can get over the top. And we're going to do that on every single play because we've got to find a way to effectively double team Devonte Adams. Right. When you don't have that as a football team, when you say we are not afraid of going one on one with any guy on your football team. When you got it like that, well, then the entirety of your playbook, whether it's defensively or offensively, is completely open. So we're like, hey, man, bring it. We're you know, it's it's it, it is global, Jim. We're better than you <laughs> and we know it. And so when you have that, and, and Chris Jones is one of those guys, I think this is a huge, I mean, I think this is a huge, huge issue for the Kansas City Chiefs. Well, let's find out how important it is and how much of a, a game changer possibly you can be. Because I have a pen. We're going to write these in pen. Okay. okay. You put them in pen. Put them in pen. Okay, you know okay. that. Uh, now i got to look at I got to right. look at it. It's okay. time for before the games can begin, we have to make our predictions oh. for the season. Okay. All right. All right. Here we go. So let's start. AFC, are, you, are you going to keep this or are you I just going to file this? it down. Well, it doesn't matter that you write it down. You don't ever keep it. You're like, oh, where did I put that? <laughs> and you're like, I've, I've been, I've played this game with you before. No, no, no. This will, I, I will hand it off to a independent arbiter. How about okay, that? Okay, all right. We're gonna, you know, it's like right. that uh, Price give, Waterhouse place. They'll right. hold on to it. And okay, give it, it to. All. all right, so AFC East. Who wins right. the AFC East? Uh, I, you know, I'm going to stick with what I just said. I'm going to stick with the Jets. I think the Jets win the AFC. There's something about Buffalo that, uh, that smells fishy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's not the wings. No, it's not the way. It's not fishy wings. <laughs> There's something over there. Maybe it's coming from Niagara uh -huh. and Buffalo's right by the Niagara Falls, sure, right? Sure, they're sure. right. They're like little, neighbors. little sludge there in the Yeah, falls, there's huh? some sludge in the water. There just feels, it feels like they regress. It feels like they made issues. They had issues. Their quarterback did in the red zone. It feels like Stephon Diggs is, is morphing back into Stephon Diggs. Stephon Diggs. Whoa, I almost called him Stephon Stiggs. <laughs> That's my dyslexia clicking in. Uh, 
Stephon Diggs feels like he's, you know, he's, you know, morphing back into disgruntled. Disgruntled. When we talk yeah. about how well you want your guys gruntled, you need more he, does gruntled not, guys. he does not feel gruntled to me. All right, I'm going to go with right. Buffalo. I'm going to go with Bills. I'm, not, I'm not ready to give up on the Bills uh, you just, would. just yet. I'm not buying the Jets hype just quite yet uh, when it comes to winning the division. All right, how about the AFC North? I'm going to go with the Bengals. I mean, I just, like, I've said this a million times before. Joe Burrow is straight up all balls. Just all, that dude is just all balls balls cool calm collected stare in the face of pressure deliver take one to the teeth i'm telling you what little macaulay conkin has grown up he is he can really play you macaulay conkin is that what his name is <laughs> i think it's macaulay Culkin. Culkin, conkin yeah, whatever Culkin. it is right? you know i'm macaulay although the better conkin now is on just got done wrapping up succession kieran conkin is awesome Who's Karen? Co- is well, that watch is, Succession? Is his brother? Yes, younger, really, younger brother. Younger brother. Younger brother. He's outstanding. Fantastic. Really fantastic. I'm going to go with Cincinnati as well. Okay. Uh, AFC South. Oh, who gives a rip? Uh, <laughs> let's go with. Let's that's go pretty with, easy, right? right that's, let's go with Jacksonville. That's Jacksonville. Let's right? go with Jacksonville. Building off of that, you know, that uh, playoff win against the Chargers, where the Chargers were up what 28 or whatever and rolled over. Chargers going to Charger. Yeah. All right, which brings us then to the okay. AFC West, right? right? It's AFC be, yeah, West. Right, and I mean, no Come on, that's a right, no brainer. That's, that's Kansas City. Okay, so not a ton of intrigue, I guess, when it comes to the AFC. How about the wild cards, though? That's maybe where it gets interesting. You got, you got three, right? All right, yeah. So who, who are your three wild cards? All right, so my three wild cards, I'm going to go Baltimore, Buffalo. You only get three wild cards? Shoot. Mm-hmm. Oh, my goodness. Buffalo. This is such a homer pick. You're going to go with the Broncos, aren't you? I want them to get in the playoffs, Mike. <laughs> well, this isn't about what you want. It's yeah, I'm gonna go, no. what you believe. I have the Chargers going to charge her. Yeah. I, something smells fishy in Miami, and it's not just the Dolphins. Mm-hmm. All right, say yeah, it. Yeah, it's say the Broncos. It. Broncos. Let's go Broncos. Sean Payton wins. Sean, we trust. Chargers, I feel like I feel like that head coach is on the... Uh... So your message to... Give me a quick little message to Charger fan. Why will they miss the playoffs? Staley? Oh, Staley thinks that there's not a fourth down that he shouldn't go for. You know, I mean, uh, like, yeah, it's the Chargers. They just find... The Chargers just find ways to lose. All right. You just got done saying great things about uh, Mac Jones. What would your message be to the Patriot fan out there? Why they're going to miss the divi- Their division's too tough. Like you're, you're just not going to, you're not going to be able to go four and two, or better in your division. You're going to lose a couple games to, you know, you're going to lose a couple games to the Jets. You're going to lose a couple games to Buffalo. You know, you probably go two and four in your division. You can't go to the playoffs with a two and four record. And that's your same message to Steeler fan. Yeah. Yep. Oh yeah. All right, I'm going to go uh, my wild cards. All right, I'll go Jets. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'll go I'll go Baltimore. Mm-hmm. And I need somebody from the West. Nah, I'm going to go Chargers. <laughs> Sorry, I can't. Wow. I can't believe I'm going to say this, but I think I actually have more faith in the Chargers than I do Russell Wilson. Well, this is going to be an interesting conversation on our radio show tomorrow, how you don't believe in Sean Payton. Cannot wait. Okay. Well, I can't wait. Tune in. Okay. All right, let's do, uh, let's do the game in the NFC. Okay. NFC East. Uh, Philly. Yeah, that's pretty easy, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, Philly, Philly. Uh, NFC North. I'm going to go Detroit. You're going to go? Why Why Detroit? I just, I, I think that what they did last year, how they build on what they did last year, I think physicality, um, the way they, the, the way they, Adhere to to being physical. Um, I I like Dan Campbell, and I look at the rest of that division, man. And I've got like Chicago still is a big question mark to me. Green Bay, I think Green Bay could be sneaky. I think Love, I think Jordan Love could be sneaky. I think they could be a sneaky good team. And I just feel like I feel like Minnesota. They, I mean, they won all those one score games. Say it. Minnesota lived a lie last year. Yeah, okay. Minnesota lived a little bit of a, you know, a, a, 
uh, I don't want to say a lie, but they. Well, you're uh, saying it was fraudulent. You're not going to win every one score game. Let's say this year you split your one score games. Right. Well, then you've won eight games. Right. Compared to last so year. It was so. a lie last year. I just uh, want no, you to I look mean, in the camera no, and tell I'm Minnesota not, I mean, fan that no, the Vikings the, lived a lie last no, year. No, they they were a fluke. They snuck up on some folks. <laughs> oh wow! All right, what, are you afraid of? Cow- I like the Minnesota. Are you afraid people? of cowboy type no, backlash no. against you? Do you think Minnesota fan is going to have backlash? They're the nicest people in the world. <laughs> they don't believe in the Vikings either. Like, <laughs> They're just nice. Okay. Uh, finally, the uh, NFC South again. Uh, I'm going to go New Orleans. By the way, I'm going to take Minnesota. I believe in you, Viking fan. Okay, good for Let's you. Go. Uh, <laughs> so you're going to go what? You said New Orleans? New Orleans. Yeah, I'll go New Orleans as well. Okay. And then in the uh, NFC West. NFC West, I'm going to go, oh, man, this is, this is I'm going to go San Fran. Yeah, San Fran. And wild cards, three wild cards. We go in the West, and we go Seattle. Yep. I don't think there will be a wild card in the South. Um, I'm going to go Dallas, and I am going to go. I am going to go Packers. Packers. Yeah. All right. All right. I'm going to go uh, Seattle. I'm going to go Dallas, and I'm going to go. Chicago. What? Chicago? Yeah. Uh, as long as Justin Fields stays healthy, he'll run around and, and, and make a lot of plays and mm. enough to get into the play. The NFC is, uh, it's a good, it's a good, it's a good season, isn't it, to be a, a wild card team in the NFC versus the AFC? Yes, because from a quarterbacking standpoint, I mean, what do you really believe in? Do you really believe, like, Geno was great last year, but do you think you repeat that? Do you really believe in um, in Derek Carr in New Orleans? Do you believe in Brock Purdy in San Francisco? Do you really believe in Kirk Cousins in, in Minnesota? I think Kirk is a great guy, but, you know, I mean, the primetime record and all those things. Jared Goff, you believe in Jared Goff? Seriously. I mean, yeah. Philadelphia Hurts was awesome last year, but – you know, Dak Prescott's got his, you know, detractors. Jerry Jones. Yep. I mean, it just is, yeah, it's it's a good year to be an NFC team, especially one flying under the radar. All right, so give me your NFC championship game. NFC championship game. Ooh. Um, I'm going to go, let's just go crazy and go San Francisco at New Orleans. Uh, San Francisco and New Orleans. New Orleans? Yeah. Okay, talk about burying the lead. Talk to me about what you like about the the I'll, Saints. I'm a big Derek Carr fan. You are, you are. You I, I really like Derek. I really like Derek Carr. No, no and, BS. And I love. I I really have loved their defense, especially their rotation up front. How about you? Oh wait, well, like I've just left Philly right out of it, right? No, you put Philly and New Orleans in there. Or no, you said San Francisco. Yeah. You say yeah. So okay. Boy. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Maybe that that no. sounds stupid. San Francisco now that, again? Uh, now that I say it, it sounds kind of stupid. No. Hmm. Yeah, San Francisco Philly. Folks, one thing you learn about this show throughout the course yeah. of the season, Mark is Mark loves himself from Shanahan. Shanahan's. Why wouldn't you? I well. Well, they're the two most talented teams in, in roster wise on on both sides. You, you, but you you don't have any fears about the San Francisco quarterback situation. You think Brock Purdy is is just fine, and if need be, Sam Darnold just fine. Yeah, I don't have any concerns to about go that. Go back to the NFC Championship game again. I don't have any concerns about that. Not at all. all. None. All right, so you Zero. got Philly and San Francisco. Okay, Who you got? I'm gonna go Philly and. Oof, boy. There's just a lot of teams beyond. I think Philly's a lock. Uh, I'm going to go Philly. How about this? I'm going to go Philly, Seattle. Why do you hate Mike Shanahan? Why do you hate Kyle Shanahan? Why do, uh, Why is there so much Shanahan hate in your – Did what did he do to you at a press conference? Did he belittle you? Oh, he gave me the eye once. Yeah. Mike Shanahan. 
Sometimes those eyes look like they're glass eyes. They're scary eyes. Yeah, he does. Scary, yeah, eyes. scary eyes. Scary eyes. It still stays with me. Uh, it's AFC. like Monsters, Inc. Scary eyes, scary eyes, scary eyes. <laughs> right? AFC Championship game. AFC Championship right, game. Now it gets, actually gets a little harder. All right, let's All right, go. Who you got? Who you got? Let's go. Let's go Jets. Come on. It's Boy, just a great story. Man, somebody is just. Let's go Jets. Climbed right up on Aaron's yarbles. Jeez. That's right. right. New That's York Jets. Right. I, got, I got a hammock underneath there. Yeah. It's nice and warm. Yeah. Uh, That's a shade. The Jets and Kansas City. Jets and Kansas City. I'm going to go Cincinnati. Oh, my gosh. And I'm going to go Cincinnati and Jacksonville. Oh, my. That's the worst pick I've ever heard. <laughs> really? Cincinnati, Jacksonville. Yep. You're just getting away from Buffalo. Oh, Mr. Buffalo. Buffalo is going to be in, in Kansas City? I, Jacksonville? Yeah. Yeah. Really? Yeah. They coming. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, and then Super Bowl, who you got? And who wins? These are all official here, folks. This is on a, my handy dandy. Notebook, yes, so. yes, yes. What I have, uh, I'm looking at what I picked. You got Philly and San Francisco, and the Jets in Kansas City. Who plays in the Super Bowl? Jets and yeah. San Francisco. Oh, stunning! Now you got to actually pick <laughs> against. You got to pick either against Aaron or against Kyle. It's a tie. No, it can't be a tie. It's a tie. It's not a tie. No, I, we don't have to pick the Super Bowl winner pick, right yes, now. You we do. got. We, yes, you do. The games we, start on Thursday. We just. We got. No, you got to pick a winner now. We just got. No, make make a stand. San Francisco. Brock Purdy. It's going to be a great story. I'm going to go Cincinnati and Philly. Mm hmm. And this time Philly gets it done. Oh. <sighs> Kind of like yours better, <laughs> but you are my intellectual property. Oh, We've established that. Oh, you'll steal this by so, week one, right? So if it turns out that it looks like you're winning, then you know, of course, I'll just take your pick and make it my intellectual property. Give me your NFL MVP this year. <laughs> my NFL MVP. Wow, this is way too. This is way too early. NFL Why is MVP. It early? Why is it early? Because it's it's they're barely called, we barely got out of August. They're called preseason predictions for I know. a reason. Everybody's doing them. NFL, Why are you so scared? NFL MVP pick. You go first. Joe Burrow. Oh my gosh! So Aaron Rodgers. Oh, so <laughs> predictable. So predictable. I love you, Aaron. I love you, Aaron. I love you, Can man. Can we still be best friends? Are we still best friends? We are besties. Can we go have a darkness retreat next year together? Mm. I'll bring just, the ghee butter. Right. I'm just smearing ghee butter all over your body. <laughs> It'll be great. <laughs> Just in the dark together. Oh, stop it. Hey, are you over there? I can't see you. Uh, those aren't those pillows. Are pillows. <laughs> oh, sorry. I thought that was my bed. <laughs> uh, for everybody involved in the Stink Truth Podcast, we appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for listening. And uh, we will be back with you. Hey, we're back. We're coming back at the end of the week. And we're doing our uh, fearless predictions yep. against the spread. Yep. Where Mike and I pick three games against the spread. We keep a tally sheet all season long, and that's when I officially crush Mike over the course of the uh, regular season. Oh, are you willing to make predictions? I don't know. You seem fearful about making predictions. Well, beating you in the in the moneymaker picks is like stealing. We'll see. Okay. We'll see. We will see. We shall see. All right. We'll be back with you guys later on in the week.